We started our adventure flying out of Phoenix, Arizona towards Kalispell Airport. Kalispell is a city in northwest Montana and it's the gateway to Glacier National Park. Flying on its own was very enjoyable, observing the change from the dry desert in Arizona to glacial blue lakes in Montana and northern states was so much fun. We landed in Kalispell in the afternoon and the first thing we did was check in the outfitter at the airport. This outfitter is where you can rent or purchase gear if you plan on hiking and camping. There are some equipment or some gear that you can't fly with like bear spray or a gas stove. And so this outfitter is the right place for you to acquire all of the missing gear that you will need during your visit to Glacier National Park. For the bear spray, they ask that you watch a short orientation video about safety in bear country and how to use the canister, because not only you have to have a bear spray canister, but you have to understand and know how you can use it when necessary. We then called the shuttle service to get us to the rental car office. We rented with the dollar company because it was the cheapest option. We loaded the car and we started driving towards the west entrance of the park, aiming for Apgar village. But before getting to Apgar village, we stopped to get some grocery shopping done so that we have snacks, water, and some fruits during our stay in the park. The drive to the park was very pleasant and the weather was very nice. This trip took place in mid-September so that we can avoid the crowds and traffic. We spent the first night at the Apgar Village Lodge right by Lake McDonald. Lake McDonald is 10 miles long and it's the largest lake in Glacier National Park. If you have more time to spend near Lake McDonald, you can go hiking or kayaking. Wow, this is beautiful. We very much enjoyed hanging out by the lake and trying the famous Hackleberry ice cream before retiring for the night. But here's a quick tour of the cabin where we spent the first night in Glacier National Park. This is our hundred fifty dollars. <laughs> it's actually not bad. If you come here for anything but to just sleep, it's yeah, like, this oh, is no cozy and comfy. And, and there's a little mirror, a little and there's a bed. And look at that. This feeds right into the lake, which is right out of the lake, I guess, which is I don't know, two hundred feet that way. Tour of the bathroom. Woo! Shower. So that is that. And that's the little cabin, and there are plenty around. So I'm just gonna go get out the back from the car and plan for tomorrow. The next morning, we woke up nice and early around 5 a.m. for the best sunrise that I have ever seen in my entire life. That was not expected at all. This sunrise is gorgeous, you guys. Glacier National Park is a very popular very busy national park so it's really important to get an early start during the day to beat traffic beat the crowds and have higher chances of securing a campground if you need one we left apgar village and our goal for the morning was to secure a campground for our stay in the park in this time of the year campgrounds were first come first served and our goal was to aim for many glacier campground one of the best campgrounds in the entire park we drove on the famous Going to the Sun Road, a scenic mountain road in Glacier National Park and the only road traversing the park. It's 50 miles long and spans the width of the park between the east and west entrance stations. It's a fun and exciting road to drive on, but it can get a bit intimidating, especially with traffic, animal crossing and some narrow turns. But there are plenty of viewpoints on the road where you can pull over, stop, take your time and enjoy the massive mountains glaciers, lakes, and tunnels. We made it to many glacier campground and we were lucky enough to find a campsite where we will be camping the entirety of our stay in Glacier National Park. How many nights are you gonna stay? Uh, how many do you have available? We were thinking three if the opportunity existed. Yeah, that's fine. We're first come, first serve right now, so you can stay up to 14 days. Um, and you're just tent camping, I'm assuming? Yeah, yeah we got our tent, sir. Okay. I'm gonna send you to site 110. Ooh fill this all out completely and then hang this like facing out on your tag so we know you're all checked in. Have you guys camped in the park before? We've First not. time in the park. Ah, all right. <laughs> well, then I'll give you a quick rundown of the rules. Um, food storage is our number one concern because of all the wildlife. Sure. Okay. You can keep anything in your vehicle and there's also like big metal food storage lockers that are shared between the sites. Okay. So you can put coolers, dishwashing buckets, like stoves. Everything needs to be put away unless you're cooking or eating. Sure, sure. Okay. Um, don't like 
leave the stove out to cool and walk over to the campground store or run off to the bathroom. Um, one of you needs to be in the site if your okay. dishes, cooler, any food particles anything of any sort. It might smell, even toiletries, wet wipes, okay. candles. We put it all away. Okay. Our plan is to pretty much use the car as our giant storage That'd locker. Be so. Yeah, yep, that's totally fine. Do you make campfires? Uh, we... I was gonna ask if it's allowed to make them. It is allowed. Okay. You just can't collect wood in the campground, so you can buy it at the store. Oh, sure. gotcha. Over at the motel, um, or if you brought some in from outside the park, that's fine also. Okay. Mm. Just don't burn any trash in the fire pit. Sure. Sounds um, good. And you can do cash, check, or credit card. We I can't like make change or anything, but it's twenty bucks a night. Wonderful. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. All right. So you I guys have... heard that twenty dollars a night. We got a campground. We didn't get a campground. And this is how it looks like. Here, mm -hmm. camp area. And over here is the burn the fire area. <laughs> Dinner table. There you go. Yeah, so they do basically assign um, campgrounds to you. They give you a number. I have to go put my number down on our little post. The reason why this campground, Many Glacier Campground, is very popular and sought after is because the campsite has restrooms, showers, laundry machines, storage bins for your food or cooking kit, and it's very close to the famous Many Glacier Hotel, and it's within a walking distance from some of the most beautiful hiking trails in the area. So the tent is out, and we're gonna just leave it here and head to the trailhead to start our first hike in Glacier National Park. Setting off on our first adventure while we're here. We're gonna go try to get to the uh, Grinnell Glacier Trailhead. Now we'll hike. All right. Grinnell Glacier Trail was my favorite day hike in the park that you should absolutely check out if you can. The trailhead is located about one mile past the turnoff for Many Glacier Hotel and the distance of the entire trail is 11.3 miles in and out. So that would take you between five to six hours, maybe a little bit more depending on your pace and how many breaks you are taking throughout the way. Habiba's enjoying her new bear bell. All the way there is the Many Glacier Hotel. I can't even begin to explain how fun and exciting of a hike this was. Very diverse, packed with surprises, and absolutely worth the challenge. The trail follows a chain of glacial lakes, starting with Swift Current Lake, going through Lake Josephine, and then Grinnell Lake. Grinnell Lake is the popular one, and it's probably what motivates a lot of people to go on this hike because of its beautiful, opaque, turquoise color. A gorgeous, unique view, but that's not it yet. You continue on to get to Upper Grinnell Lake, and on your way, you will see some beautiful waterfalls, and if you're lucky, you can spot some wildlife like mountain goats, Goats or bighorn sheep. And at the end of the trail is where Grinnell Glacier is, many floating chunks of icebergs, the view of the glacier if it's a clear day, and landscape completely out of this world. If you are going to Glacier National Park and you are interested in this hike, I have a full article in my website where I talk about this hike in details, what you need to pack, wildlife in the area, alternative ways to cut on the distance if you can't hike for 11 miles or if you just don't have the time. The link is going to be in the description box. And before we go any further, if you are finding value in this adventure travel guide, please take a moment to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. We wrapped up the day snacking on some oranges, my favorite snack after hiking. And then we headed to Many Glacier Lodge where we had dinner for the night. Many Glacier Lodge is very popular in the area. And even if you're not staying at the lodge, make sure to take some time to check it out. It's this beautiful, old, authentic lodge. You can have dinner there or you can grab a drink. And then we went back to our campground, to our tents where we spent the night. So Habib and I are going to grab a shower here. And it looks like they closed these showers for cleaning just about right now. So she was going to snag the soap, run in, take a quickie. Then I was going to grab one. But it looks like I might have to wait a little longer. We're probably going to go do a couple of drive arounds today and some smaller hikes because it's raining and it, we're under the impression it should rain more. But um, if it doesn't, we might sneak in a little bit of a longer hike. Otherwise, we're just going to go do some sightseeing and a couple of one or two mile hikes and just try to string a bunch of uh, little ones together. So. 
We start to drive in from many glacier area to St. Mary. These two areas are located 20 miles apart. The road was bumpy and not very well maintained, especially with the rain, at least back then. We are here at the trailhead and it's called Three Falls Trail because it has three waterfalls. The first one is Bering Falls, St. Mary Falls and Virginia Falls. This is where we are at Sand Point. We will go all the way here to Virginia Falls. Yeah, we just gotta be warm today is all. This hike goes through three scenic waterfalls and travels through a section of the 2015 Reynolds Creek fire where burnt timber has opened new views. Add to that some fall colors and you have a unique landscape to enjoy. It was a lot of fun to go from one waterfall to the other and the further you go, the better the reward. There are many ways to do this hike with options to start from different trailheads and there is even a shuttle system to support getting to and from different points but we chose to start at Three Falls Trailhead, go all the way to Virginia Falls and back to the same point. I have more details on how you can do this hike on my website, the link is in the description box. This hike is recommended for anyone who's looking for a relatively easy half day hike and that's exactly what we wanted for our third day in the park. This trail offers a lot of opportunities for photography, especially with the three different waterfalls throughout the hike. We were also able to see a lot of deer on this trail, so keep an eye out for that. Bering Falls, St. Mary Falls and Virginia Falls were all breathtaking to say the least. Oh, it's empty right now. Yep. Our car and probably the car of the guy who just took our picture. We started the day with the same ritual, leaving our campsite and heading to Many Glacier Lodge to grab a hot drink before heading out for our big hike for the day. We've been taking refuge in this uh, hotel, Many Glacier Hotel. We kind of come here to charge our camera and phones and then just lounge around. Today's hike is something that was not planned, but it was highly recommended by a lot of people that we met on the trail, and that is Ptarmigan Lake Trail. The trailhead begins behind the cabins near the Swift Current Motor Inn, which was within a walking distance from our campground. This little box, and then you click the buttons and it will walk you through information. Food and water sufficient for a 10 mile hike, lasting four to six hours. At least two liters of water is needed per person. Weather can be very unpredictable. Dress in layers and be prepared for sudden drops in temperature. What about bears? Be aware of your surroundings at all time while hiking. If you see a bear, maintain a safe distance of at least 100 yards. Avoid surprising bears by making plenty of noise. Conversation alone is not enough. Yield to bears traveling directly on or beside the trail. Step off the trail and let bears pass at a safe distance. Should you encounter a bear at close range, remain calm and speak in a calm voice. Do not shout at the bear and do not run. Speak calmly and slowly. Back away from the bear to a safe distance. In addition to these guidelines, we recommend that you carry bear spray and know how to use it. From the trailhead, it's going to be uphill pretty much all the way to Tarmigan Lake. If you search for Tarmigan Lake Trail on all trails, you'll see that this trail is rated hard and it goes for 8.6 miles, but if you plan to make it all the way to the tunnel, there is a bit of a climb left and some switchbacks before you get to the tunnel. This is the tunnel, tunnel, tunnel. It might be snowing on the Yeah, so let's see. Ooh. Ooh. This is so very cool, did not expect that. Once you get there and on a clear day, it opens up to a wonderful view, which was completely covered in fog by the time we got there. So there is the trail goes on and on and on to an upper lake where people are allowed to camp. Oh my God, you, you can't even see what's there.
we made our way down from Tarmigan Tunnel and we chose to log some extra miles by going for a side hike on Iceberg Lake Trail. The trailhead for this hike is the same as the one that takes you to Tarmigan Lake, so we made our way down to the intersection that connects Tarmigan Trail and Iceberg Lake Trail. You can do Iceberg Trail as a day hike if you choose to. It's a moderate 9.3 mile hike in and out from the trailhead. Look at that! Wow! This is gorgeous! Views are panoramic for most of the route. The trail ends at a lake called Iceberg Lake, named for the icebergs that float in the lake all year round. The lake is in the shadows of Mount Wilbur and it gets very little sun, so the water remains cold with some of the icebergs being big enough to stand on. Not that I suggest that, but just for your information. We were pretty much the only people on that trail. It was very calm and peaceful and we had an amazing reward waiting for us. Look, 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 this wow. is him now. Look, look, this is what we're oh seeing. Oh my god, look, look. This is what, this is the moose. <laughs> Where is it though? Habiba is very that happy. Moose. I thought that moose were not real. I promise <laughs> I did. Good morning. Morning, guys. It is our last day in the park and we already packed our tent and everything and saying bye to this beautiful spot that we called home for the last few days. <laughs> yeah, we're going to take off across the park now, look at uh, Logan Pass, I think. Uh, and we'll stop there to pack our bags. Hopefully stuff will dry out a little bit in the trunk. And then we're off to the airport. Um, two things that I wanted to show you before we keep going. There is a recycle bin here. And then the other thing is, these are the trash cans. And Alex, if you want to show real quick, you open it. So, because bears are smart and they can open it, so close it. If you try to open it just like that, it won't open. There is a little hatch, you pull and then open. Ta -da. And I also want to show them the food storage. Now, the food storage, because you're not supposed to leave your food outside, you either keep it in your vehicle or if you don't have a vehicle, you don't have enough space, then you can use the food storage. Slide your hand up here, push up, open, and then you will see all the stuff that people packed here for night. Someone has berries. Definitely don't want to leave these outside because bears love them berries. And then you close. And then you do the same up. Food storage only. That is that. So we are stopping by <coughs> Logan Pass Visitor Center here. I'm hoping that we can see some mountain goats and just check the visitor center. Wow, there's a long line to get to the restaurant. We're here at the Logan Pass Visitor Center. We're gonna sneak inside and see what it's all about. We got a little bit of time to burn on our way back to the airport. But yeah, you can see it's busy. A lot of people. Hidden Lake Trail starts from the visitor center at Logan Pass if you're looking for another hike. It's a moderate 5.3 mile trail to a great view of Hidden Lake with an option of hiking down to the lake. Unfortunately, it's not something that we did because we were limited by time, but we will leave some useful links for you in the description box if you're interested in this hike. And that wrapped up our visit to Glacier National Park. We went back to Apgar Village to grab some souvenirs and send some postcards. If you found this guide to be useful, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. My name is Habiba, this is Trekking Pals and I will see you very soon on a new adventure.